Hello Da Vinci, welcome back. This is our computing lesson for this week. So, where have we seen information technology in the world? So let's have a look. In lesson three, we're going to be looking at some examples of information technology, talking about information technology and comparing them, okay? So we looked at information technology or IT at home. So we might have seen maybe a TV, maybe a smart TV. We might have seen our washing machine at home with different settings with a computer inside, remember. We've got a smartphone with a computer inside. We've got our home telephone, something that's got a receiving calls and dialing calls. It's got its own computer. We've got our Wi-Fi uh, router that's collecting information in from outside and distributing and sending out the Wi-Fi signal around your home. We've got a games console that's obviously reading your your video games and you can play them, you're sending it signals and you're watching something as it happens. And then you've got your tablet, similar to your iPhone or your phone, and then a laptop as well. It's obviously different to a desktop. Laptop, something that I can portable, can close it up, take it with me. Desktop, big computer, can't bring it with me, it's too big. So where else might we find information technology other than our home? Do you think we'd find IT here in the shops? Do you think we'd find IT in the woods? Do you think we might find IT in offices, the big office blocks? Do we think we might find IT at the beach? Or do we think we might find IT for all of those places? What do we think? Maybe talk to your teddy, have a discussion on which ones you definitely think we'd find IT and some that you're not sure we would. Well, we would find out, uh, information technology in these places, in shops, cafes or restaurants. And these are some of the things that we might find. So where might we find them? So we've got here an ATM machine where you put in your card and you take out money. This has got its own computer because it's reading your card and it's giving out your money and it's checking that you've got your right number. We've got a weighing scale. Now, it's not weighing as in like you put something on one side that's heavy and it balances out on the other side. What it is doing is you're putting something on a scale and it tells you digitally your, your the weight of your item that you've put on there. Now, that needs a computer to tell you how heavy something is. You've then got your pedestrian crossing. So somebody crossing the road, the traffic lights crossing the road. You've then got your pedestrian weight button where you push the button and it tells you to wait or it tells you to go. You've then got a barcode or a desktop PC, the one that we said we couldn't take with us. We've got a street lamp and a card reader and a laptop and a printer and a barcode scanner. One where you scan an item using this barcode and it'll tell you how much it costs and how much you need to pay. You've got some security cameras. You've got under just under me there, we've got your credit card there. And then you've also got your um, cash machine, there's even a speed camera. So those big yellow boxes that, that record how fast you're going if you're driving too fast. These are all bits of IT, information technology that we see around us that we don't realize is actually computers that are helping us in daily life. So we're gonna have a look at where we think each one of these things would be. So the first one, the ATM. This is, these are all computers. These are all things that you will find computers either in them, they are computers, or they're using computers to send information out. Okay, so they all require or have a computer in them. Now, something like this, the ATM machine, where you go and you go and get out money, the cash machine, is that going to be found in the street or at a shop or a cafe? Where would you find that? Where would you find one of these? Well, you'd find it in the street. You would find one of these in the street. And what you do is you go up to it and you can put in your card, you can take out some money and you walk off. You don't need to go into a shop to get one. What about the weighing scales? Where would we find the weighing scales? Would we find them in the street? Or would we find them in a shop? What do we think? We're going to find them in a shop or a cafe. Now, you might not find it in a cafe. You definitely might find it in a shop. If you go into maybe the post office, that's a shop, and they might weigh your parcel to see how much it is to then send it off. What about the pedestrian weight? 
when you press the button because you want to cross the road, it tells you to wait. It's got its own computer that tells it when you can cross, when you need to wait. So where do you think you'd find that? Would you find that in a shop and a cafe? Would you find that in the street? Let's have a look. Ooh, definitely find that in the street. You're crossing a road. You don't see roads inside cafes, do you? So you'd see it in the street. What about the speed camera? Speed camera. Well, speed cameras for driving your cars to see if you're going too fast. You're definitely going to find that in the streets, definitely. And then we've got our pedestrian traffic lights. Do we think we'd find that in the shop or in the street? In the street, because it's to help us cross the road. Now a barcode, barcode that tells us about what you have bought. Now it might be something that you picked up and it says how much it costs. But instead of writing down every single, sorry, instead of it being a amount that it says on it, instead of it being like 29 pounds, it says in these little tiny numbers, and it's got these lines in it. And you need a special barcode scanner, this one here next to our credit card, that then scans it and it gives all of that information in the tiny little uh, lines, sends it to the barcode and tells you how much you need to pay and whether it's on offer maybe. Because if it was on offer, you'd need somebody to go around and put a little sticker on saying it's on offer on every single item and that would take a long time. Whereas with a computer barcode, you can just type in on your computer that the barcode needs to change how much it costs. And you can tell the barcode scanner that it's cheaper than usual. So that's why barcodes are, in, are really important. So where would you find a barcode? In the street? Or would you find it in a shop and a cafe on an item? You definitely find it in a shop or a cafe because it's to tell you how much something's worth. Right, I'm going to flip myself over to this side so you can see a couple more. So what have we got here? We've got a tablet. A tablet, would you find in a street just on the side of the road? Would you find it in a shop or a cafe? You'd use it in a shop or a cafe, wouldn't you? What about a desktop? Well, it's just like a tablet, isn't it? But a bit bigger with a keyboard. It's going to be the same place in a shop or a cafe. What about a cash machine? Where would you find a cash machine? Sorry, yeah, cash machine, yeah. Where would you find a cash machine? You're going to pay something, you type in how much it costs, Press the button to give you some change. Where would you find that? You'd find it in a shop or a cafe. Right, what about this card reader? Now, it's different to an ATM machine or a cash machine because a cash machine, you put it in and you take out the money you need. For this, this is why this might be what they charge you. So if you've not got cash on you, but you have a card on you, you can pay on card. Now, you need a card machine to tell it how much it needs to take away from your card. So where would you find that? You'd find it in a shop. What about your desktop? Your desktop PC. Would you find that in the street or would you find it in a shop or a cafe? Well, you're going to find that in a shop or a cafe because you're going to you might buy that from a shop or you might have it in a shop to tell you how much something's worth. What about a printer? Where are you going to find that? Again, you're going to find that in maybe a shop or a cafe. You'd find that maybe in a shop if you go in, in like a curry shop, you could go and buy it there, something like that. Right, a street lamp. Now that's going to be giving a big clue away. A street lamp. Where are we going to find that? It's a computer. It needs to it needs to be told what time to come on, and it has the technology inside it to know when it's the right darkness to turn itself on. Well, it's going to be in the street. There it is. I thought it was going to disappear then. In the street. Now, this is a tricky one, this one, a security camera one. Now, I've put this one in a shop or a cafe because you have small security cameras that look a little bit like this in a shop or a cafe. However, if you are thinking right now, hold on, Mr. Watkins, I've seen cameras outside in like shopping centres, maybe if it's an outdoor shopping centre and you've got those big black domed cameras and they're looking all around and they can see you walking around, you might be saying, I've seen them in the street. And you're absolutely right. So certain cameras are made for outdoors in the street. And certain cameras, like maybe this one, might be inside in a cafe or a restaurant or something to make sure that there's no silly um, behaviour inside the cafe so that they've got it on a recording. But you might see just one that goes on every single day to see what's happening in the street that the police might want to look at, something like that. So these, this camera one could technically go in both, but it needs to be a special camera to be in the streets, so it's weatherproof. You've then got your bank card. 
So where your bank card, where are you going to find that? You're going to use that in the street. You're going to use that in a cafe. Again, it could be both. For one reason, you can use it to use the cash machine, which you find in the street. So you might use it in the street. But where you're most likely going to use it, more often you're going to use it to buy things from a shop or a cafe. You're going to use it to tap or put in your card and type in your number put it in, uh, to buy things. And the last one, a barcode reader. So you can see here, it's a little gadget. Now, I tell you what, here's a challenge. Here's a good challenge. If you go out to the shops and you maybe go to a big Tesco's or a big Sainsbury's or something like that, they've got these little gadgets that look like one of those barcode readers. And what they are is they look like a, a little gun almost that's got its own little trigger, but it's got something that scans things. And you might use it as if you're going shopping. And what you do is instead of take, getting all your things and putting them in the trolley and going to the end and then putting it all on the conveyor belt and then scanning it all for you, what you could do is you take this and you go beep, 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 and you use it like your own little scanner and you scan your own items as you're going along. That's a barcode scanner. And it means that it remembers all the information and it says right at the end, oh, your total is everything that you've scanned equals this amount. So you don't have to get it scanned by the person working at the kills. So that would be something you'd definitely use in a shop, but it's something that I encourage you to go and have a look for next time. And if you do have the option to use it, I would recommend using it because it's very interesting to see how it works, how it scans the tiny little barcode on it, and it gives all the information of what the product is to you. So let's have a talk about it. Where are you gonna see these? What are they used for? Why do we use them and how do they work? Well, if you've had that discussion of talking to your teddy, you might have said, well, we're going to find these outside. We're, why do we need them? Well, what are they used for? They're used to tell cars to go or tell cars to stop, tell people to go and tell people to stop. And you can see that it all works from this one button. This one button here presses to say, wait, this button then tells this computer inside the traffic lights there's somebody waiting so i need to change my color to red so that they're not going to get hit by a car once this one has changed to orange and then changed to red and it's on red and all the cars have stopped then this one over here with the green man is then going to go from red man i've not got a picture of the red man but it's not it's going to go from the picture of the red man saying stop it's going to go for a picture of the green man saying you can walk now and this wait sign will disappear now, all of those three things were linked together with special connectors where you press the button and it tells you where to go. Now, I've got one more super interesting fact that these pedestrian things, uh, these pedestrian computers also do. Now, you know they've got a button here, but they also have a really cool feature to help people that are blind. Underneath, the bottom of these pedestrian um, boxes is a tiny little, it looks a bit like a, um, the top end of my pen, looks like this. And it's a tiny little uh, rotating cone almost. And it sits underneath, it sits still. And, you, if you, and it's for people that are blind, that can't see when the, it says to go. And what it does is it spins really slowly in the, in the fingers of someone that's blind to tell them it's safe to cross now. So it's got two things that it does. It tells you it's safe to cross with the green man and it also twirls a small cone underneath the box to say it's safe to cross but if you were blind. Now, how do they work? We've explained that they're all linked together, all working off that one button. And then when that one button, and when you've crossed, it'll then go back to wait this will go back to red and this will then change to orange and green. I want to think of your, your task today. Can you think of a job where workers may not use IT? And it's just a thinking task for today where people do not use information technology in their job. Now, there are a few examples that I've given here and I'm not going to tell you what I've, I've chosen these pictures for because they might be given a, a hint of what kind of jobs don't use computer technology. Now, I was having a discussion with some of the other teachers and we thought, actually, 
you can put information technology into a lot of jobs now. Like before, if you were a teacher, 30, 30, 40 years ago, you wouldn't be using any technology really. You'd be using a lot of working from books, working on a, a blackboard or a whiteboard that's not a smart board, and you'd be doing lots of work like that. But now we can't survive without our information technology because how would you be at school right now? It's not safe for us to be at school at the moment, but right now you're learning from YouTube. You're using information technology for me to be able to teach you. So we were thinking, what jobs can you think of where workers do not need any computers, do not need any IT? Now, you'd, you can have some talking time and you can share it and maybe you could tell your adult and that'd be amazing. Thanks very much for coming along to this session. It's been a bit of an exploring lesson about looking at more IT in the world. Thanks so much. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.